Most people associate volcanoes with red lava flows, but there is a volcano in Indonesia that emits eerie blue flames instead. Kawa Ijen, located on Java Island, is renowned for this phenomenon, which occurs due to the combustion of sulphur gases. Unlike typical molten lava, these blue flames result from sulphur dioxide and hydrogen sulphide gases emitted from the volcano's fumaroles. When the gases make contact with oxygen in open air, they ignite at temperatures over 360 degrees Celsius or 680 degrees Fahrenheit, creating blue flames that flow down the volcanic slopes, giving the appearance of blue lava. This effect is particularly visible at night, when the darkness amplifies the contrast of the bright blue flames against the surrounding landscape. While the flames may look like flowing lava, they are actually burning sulfuric gases, a rare occurrence that few volcanic environments can sustain. The conditions required for this mesmerizing display are somewhat specific to Kawa Ijen due to its high sulfur content and the intense fumarolic activity around its crater. The crater itself hosts a hyperacidic lake, with sulfur-laden gases continuously venting from beneath the lake bed and along the crater walls. The high concentration of sulfur, coupled with Kawa Ijen's relatively enclosed cold era, allows the gases to build up and combust as they escape into the oxygen-rich atmosphere. As the gases burn, they generate a blue flame that is both beautiful and dangerous. Miners in the area who extract solidified sulfur deposits must work amid these toxic burning gases, often without adequate protection. The flames are an example of the unique geochemical environment at Kawa Ijen, where sulfur emissions, extreme acidity and volcanic heat interact to create this otherworldly display. Kawa Ijen is situated within the larger Ijen caldera, a massive 20 km wide depression formed by a series of explosive eruptions that occurred approximately 50,000 years ago. Given the size of the caldera, it's likely that the eruptions that formed it reached a near supervolcanic scale, falling under a likely volcanic explosivity index of 7. The repeated expulsion of magma during the eruption emptied the central magma chamber below, leaving it unsupported. Eventually this led to a catastrophic collapse of the overlying rock, forming a large caldera a common outcome for eruptions of this magnitude. The formation of the Aegean caldera left a wide depression that was subsequently modified by further volcanic activity and erosion. The Aegean caldera hosts several volcanic features, with Kawa Aegean being the most prominent stratovolcano, located within the eastern part of the caldera. Standing at an elevation of around 2,799 meters, or 9,183 feet, it is large enough to host its own crater lake, which is approximately one kilometer in diameter. The lake is recognized as the largest highly acidic crater lake in the world. This caldera is part of the Sunda Volcanic Arc, which stretches across Indonesia due to the subduction of the Indo-Australian plate beneath the Sunda plate. The tectonic activity from this plate boundary has fueled volcanic activity in the region, leading to the formation of multiple stratovolcanoes, including Kawa Ijen. A stratovolcano, also known as a composite volcano, is a steep conical volcano built up by alternating layers of lava flows, volcanic ash and pyroclastic deposits, typically characterized by explosive eruptions due to the viscous gas-rich magma that feeds it. Kawa Ijen is primarily composed of andesitic and basaltic andesitic lavas. The intense geochemical interactions within the crater have resulted in extensive mineralization, with deposits of sulfur, alunite and opaline silica marking the landscape while trace amounts of gold, silver and copper have also been concentrated through these high sulfidation processes. As sulfur-rich volcanic gases interact with the surrounding rocks, they mobilize and deposit precious metals within minerals such as pyrite and alunite, which can contain microscopic inclusions of gold and other valuable metals. Although not present in economically significant quantities for mining, these metal deposits provide valuable insights into the potential for ore formation in similar high sulfidation environments and add to the geological significance of the Aegean Volcanic Complex. Kawa Aegean's Crater Lake is one of the most acidic bodies of water on Earth, with a pH close to zero, due to the high concentration of sulfuric and hydrochloric acids dissolved within it. This vibrant turquoise lake is continuously fed by volcanic gases emitted from fumaroles beneath its surface. These gases dissolve into lake water, creating a hyperacidic environment that is hostile to most forms of life. The acidity of the lake also leads to significant rock alteration and mineral deposition, as the acid reacts with surrounding volcanic rocks, leaching metals like aluminium, iron and manganese into the water. These interactions give the lake its distinctive colour. Kawa Ijen's most recent large-scale eruption took place in 1817, 
a significant phreatomagmatic event that reshaped the crater and generated extensive lahars, or volcanic mudflows, that swept down the mountainside. The eruption began with a series of earthquakes and explosions, followed by an ash column that darkened the skies and deposited several centimetres of ash in nearby towns. During this event, the volcanic lake was expelled, and acidic lahars, which are fast-moving flows of volcanic debris, ash and water, surged down river channels, carrying corrosive acids that eroded the landscape and posed significant hazards to anything in their path. Lahars are dangerous enough on their own, but at Kawa Ijin, acidic lahars occur. Because the water within these lakes is laden with sulfuric and hydrochloric acids, lahars generated from such sources are extremely acidic, capable of eroding and altering both natural landscapes and human structures in their path. When released, acidic lahars can destroy vegetation, contaminate water sources, and severely damage infrastructure due to their low pH and high content of dissolved metals. Moreover, these flows pose severe environmental and health hazards to communities downstream as they carry toxic elements and acidic compounds over large areas. If a human or animal was caught in the path of this type of lahar, contact would cause severe chemical burns that would quickly destroy skin and soft tissue. Unsurprisingly, considering the fact it hosts a high sulfidation environment, Kawa Ijin contains vast sulfur deposits, which form as volcanic gases condense and cool near the surface. These gases, emitted through fumaroles around the crater, solidify into vivid yellow sulfur deposits as they reach cooler air. Miners extract these solid sulfur deposits by hand, often under dangerous conditions due to the toxic gas emissions and steep crater walls. The economic significance of Kawa Ijin primarily lies in its sulfur mining industry. Local miners who extract and carry sulfur from the crater sell it for various industrial uses, such as in the production of sulfuric acid, fertilizers and rubber. Despite the risks associated with this work, the sulfur provides a critical income source for the local community. Furthermore, Kawa Ijin's unique mineral assemblages make it a valuable site for geological and geochemical research, particularly in understanding high sulfidation epithermal systems that can host precious metal deposits elsewhere. The presence of minerals like opal and alienite in an active volcanic setting allows researchers to study processes typically associated with ore formation, giving insight into potential economic applications in similar high sulfidation systems. In contrast to the advanced sulfur recovery methods used in first world countries, the sulfur extraction process at Kawa Ijin is a much more manual and traditional method. At Kawa Ijin, miners break apart these solidified sulfur deposits with simple tools and carry them out by hand, often in extremely harsh conditions with minimal protective gear against the toxic gases. This process, which dates back to a time when sulfur was extracted by mining volcanic sources globally, is labour-intensive and involves significant health risks for miners, who inhale sulfurous fumes and carry heavy loads down the treacherous slopes of the crater. In contrast, modern sulfur extraction through hydro-desulfurisation and the Klaus process in oil and gas refineries is automated, highly efficient and much safer for workers. These industrial methods not only supply a far greater quantity of sulfur to meet today's demand, but also eliminate many of the hazards faced by miners at traditional sites like Kawa Ijin. Kawa Ijin stands as one of the most fascinating volcanic features on Earth, showcasing a unique combination of geological and geochemical wonders. From its striking blue flames, its hyperacidic crater lake, to the massive caldera that it lies within, Kawa Ijin exemplifies the extraordinary forces and conditions that arise from active volcanic systems. The sulfur-rich fumaroles, extensive mineral deposits, and traces of precious metals within the crater provide valuable insights into high sulfidation environments and have made the site significant for both scientific study and local sulfur mining. Despite the hazards it poses, from toxic gases to the potential for acidic lahars, Kawa Ijin remains a place of immense natural beauty and scientific interest, where the interplay of volcanic gases, heat and minerals continues to shape and redefine the landscape. I hope you found this topic to be as interesting as I did, and as always, thanks for watching. Before I end this video, I'd like to give a big shout out to my Patreon and YouTube members. Thank you so much to everyone that helps to support this channel.